Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the Speaker of the Egyptian House of Representatives, Dr. Ali Abdul Al, and his accompanying delegation upon their visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain from an invitation from the Council of Representatives Speaker. Dr. Ali Abdullah Al conveyed the greetings of the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi to His Majesty the King and his wishes of development and prosperity to the Bahraini people. His Majesty the King requested Dr. Ali Abdel Al to convey his greetings to the Egyptian President and his wishes of further prosperity to the Egyptian people. His Majesty the King affirmed his pride in the deep rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and Egypt, which witnesses development in various fields. His Majesty noted the joint efforts exerted by the leadership of both countries to develop these relations and achieve the interests of the two countries and their people. His Majesty the King welcomed the Speaker of the Egyptian House of Representatives and his visit to the country, which reflects the strength of the Bahraini Egyptian relations. He also hailed the Bahraini Egyptian parliamentary cooperation and exchange of expert experiences which contributes in developing democratic life in both countries. His Majesty praised the supportive stance of Egypt towards Bahrain and its historic role in defending the interests of the Arab nations and its issues, as well as its keenness to protect Arab national security, which is a fundamental pillar of Arab solidarity. He also stressed Egypt's important role in maintaining security and stability in the region. His Majesty highlighted the achievement and gains of the Kingdom's parliamentary and legislative march, affirming that Bahrain was successful in establishing an effective parliamentary experience and an advanced model of democratic practice, as well as performing supervisory and legislative tasks through the Council of Representatives and Shura Council. Dr. Ali Abdel Al expressed thanks and appreciation for His Majesty's keenness to develop cooperation between the two countries in all fields, especially in the parliamentary field. He also affirmed Egypt's support of Bahrain to maintain its security and stability, expressing his country's pride in his close brotherly ties with Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and President of the Board of Trustees of the Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Center for Culture and Research, Sheikh May bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King hailed the role of Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Center for Culture and Research in documenting Bahrain's history and heritage and hosting lectures and seminars with intellectuals, artists and writers, noting the center's achievements and successes in maintaining the heritage. His Majesty commended the restoration and revitalization of traditional Bahraini houses, wishing everyone success. For her part, Sheikh Hamey expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for supporting the cultural movement in the Kingdom and the Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Center for Culture and Research since its establishment. She added that the culture in Bahrain is in the public and civil sectors, owes its success to the leadership's support. Sheikh Hamey also briefed His Majesty the King on the achievements of the center.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today received at Ghadaybiya Palace the Speaker of the Egyptian House of Representatives Dr. Ali Abdul Al and his accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness stated that the Egyptian delegation's visit reflects the historic brotherly relations between the two countries. The Speaker of the Egyptian House of Representatives affirmed that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi instructed him to convey a message of support and reassurance that Egypt would support Bahrain with its full potential. His Royal Highness hailed Egypt's political weight on the Arab and regional levels and the efforts of his president to boost integration and support the Arab and Islamic nations' causes. He stressed that Egypt's stability is that of the Arab nation, wishing the Egyptian president and his government success in achieving security and stability for their country. The Prime Minister commended Egypt's stance that supports the kingdom in maintaining its security and stability, and he assured that the current state of the Arab nation requires unity to address any polit politics that seek to undermine regional security and stability. His Royal Highness noted the importance of intensifying visits and meetings between officials to coordinate stances towards regional challenges. He also highlighted the Egyptian community's contributions to the field of education, health and law. For his part, the Speaker of the Egyptian House of Representatives expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his keenness on bolstering bilateral relations, praising His Royal Highness's supportive stances towards Egypt. He noted His Royal Highness's wisdom and initiatives to achieve Arab unity and solidarity. He also lauded Bahraini people's patriotism and sincerity, affirming that the stances of the Bahraini people and leadership are historically appreciated and respected. He invited His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to visit Egypt. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Ghadibiya Palace. In implementation of the Royal Directives, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister ordered all ministries and government bodies to eliminate any project that involves an increase in fees until the end of the work of the Joint Committee of the Legislative and Executive Authorities to streamline subsidies to eligible citizens affected by fee hikes. His Royal Highness directed ministries and government bodies to regulate expenditure, stop unjustified spending and attract more investments and investors. The Prime Minister noted the artistic, cultural and educational events witnessed by the Kingdom held under his patronage and attended by Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, deputized by His Royal Highness, which are the annual fine arts exhibition that highlighted Bahraini artist creations and the University of Bahrain's 23rd graduation ceremony, which reflects the development of higher education in Bahrain. His Royal Highness congratulated all graduates and wished them success hailing the efforts of the academic and administrative bodies at the university. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister announced that February the 13th, which marks the National Sports Day, will be a half work day to allow employees to participate, directing all ministries and government institutions to organize sports activities.
The cabinet hailed the noble initiatives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to support the youth, noting the renowned of King Hamad Youth Empowerment Award, which aims to enable the youth to achieve the goals of sustainable development and highlight the creativity and powers of the youth. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs submitted a memorandum on the preparation for the announcement of the awards of winners. The cabinet praised the meeting of the Minister of Interior with public figures which promotes the concept of community partnership. The cabinet also hailed the briefing on the security efforts which led to conducting a proactive security operation that throttled a number of terrorist crimes targeting Bahrain. The council noted the importance of the national responsibility to maintain the security of the kingdom, praising the efforts of the security bodies and strongly condemning terrorist crimes. The cabinet followed up on the economic indicators, which reflected the continuous growth of the national economy as the GDP recorded a growth by 3.5% compared to 2016. Non-oil export increased by 17% compared to the same period, and the trade balance said deficit decreased by 5% compared to the second quarter of the same year. In addition, 15 industrial licenses were issued, providing 776 jobs. The cabinet reviewed amending the law of the Court of Cassations to include procedures to appeal civil and family judgments and refer the memorandum submitted on this regard to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The cabinet approved to establish a new directorate at the Ministry of Finance concerned with implementing the government's policies and procedures related to organizing and structuring the public debt according to the best practices and international standards. The cabinet approved the ratification of two conventions between the government of Bahrain and Egypt in cooperation in the field of commercial maritime navigation and avoidance of double taxation and prevention of tax evasion. The cabinet approved the ratification of the cooperation agreement between the governments of Bahrain and the Republic of Cyprus on fighting terrorism, organized crime, illicit trafficking in narcotic drugs as psychotropic substances and their precursors, illegal migration and other criminal offenses stipulated in the convention. The cabinet referred to the Representatives Council two draft laws, the first amending Article 56 of Traffic Law 23 of 2014 and the second, a draft law amending Article 1 of Law 32 of 2010 on financial disclosure. The cabinet approved three proposals on the preparation of a comprehensive national strategy to deal with human rights reports issued about the kingdom and on the implementation of a physical literacy program in kindergartens and basic educational stages, as well as proposals on the bowling and snooker federations. As for ministerial reports, the cabinet reviewed a report submitted by the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs on the eighth meeting of the International Renewable Energy Agency and the results of the participation in the Abu Dhabi sustainable event, Sustainability Event, the International Summit for Future Energy, the World Future Energy Summit and the World Water Summit recently held in the United Arab Emirates. The Cabinet also reviewed a report submitted by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the result of the participation in the International Trade Fair for Tourism recently held in Madrid. Her Royal Highness wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, attended today Sheikh Hassa bint Salman Al Khalifa Award and affirmed the Council's keenness to support all initiatives and youth voluntary projects that aim to achieve progress in the Bahraini society. She praised the continuous support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Her Royal Highness recorded the huge role of the late Sheikh Hassa bint Salman Al Khalifa in supporting charity, voluntary and social works. She added that the significant status of the kingdom in regard to charity and voluntary works is thanks to the efforts of the late Sheikh Hassa. Her Royal Highness honored the winners of the award and praised the Bahraini initiatives that focuses on humanitarian values among its society. She also added that this award aims to enhance the stability in the Bahraini society, support participants and encourage competition in order to ensure the progress march of the society. Her Royal Highness praised the efforts of the chairwoman of the award committee, Sheikha Hissa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa in supervising the award and the strong, the, the strong cooperation among the awards committee members. The chairwoman of the award committee then delivered a speech in which she expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Royal Highness Wife of His Majesty the King for her national initiative and her role in empowering women. Sheikha Hissa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa stressed the importance of supporting private sector institutions and adopting successful voluntary projects that embrace the values of loyalty and national responsibility 
to the youth and they motivate them to serve their country. The second edition of Sheikh Hassa bin Salman Al Khalifa Award for Youth Voluntary Work is one of the initiatives of the Supreme Council for Women under the Royal Order 15 of 2011 in commemoration of the role of the late Sheikh Hassa bin Salman Al Khalifa in supporting charity, social and voluntary work. Chairwoman of the award committee, Sheikh Hassa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, pointed out that this edition witnessed an 82% increase in participation compared to the first edition. We are here to celebrate the prize giving ceremony for the voluntary uh, prize in the name of her, the late Her Highness Sheikh Hassan bin Salman Al Khalifa, the King's mother. The prize uh, recognizes uh, voluntary work done by youth who have created their own voluntary organizations to give back to society. We are hoping in the third uh, round of this prize that we have more young people um, applying for this prize. Uh, and we hope that this highlights their contribution to society and their citizenship to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The main goal of the award is to attract projects that spread hope in the Bahraini society and get young people more involved in charity works. The, uh, the, the main goals of, the, uh, of this uh, award, distinguished award, is uh, to promote the voluntary work among the youth, uh, to also uh, make them uh, innovative and creative uh, in presenting uh, uh, their work, to inspire others, to inspire their colleagues uh, towards the uh, voluntary work, and also to create um, a healthy uh, competition uh, between them so they can really give their best uh, among them. This is about goodness for the society. During the ceremony, Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, honored the winners of the award. The winner of the first place in the individual category was Salman Sindi with the Voluntary Work Development Center project, and the second place winner was Hamoud Jassim with a project titled Coming Back to Life. It is an honor to, uh, to have this achievement for us getting the second place for, uh, for Sheikh Hassan bin Salman. Uh, Al Khalifa 
and this is uh, will add more responsibility to me to, uh, to do more and more uh, to support the cancer warriors in the community. The winning project of the first place in the group category was Your Home is Our Home and the second place winning project was Be Ready. We are hoping that to achieve after maybe five years uh, to not only in the Gulf but outside uh, to help a lot of people to reach other countries uh, and to provide uh, more than first aid. The aim of the award is to enhance the value of voluntary work and present it as a national and humanitarian duty as well as encourage the youth to carry out voluntary projects and contribute to the progress and prosperity of the kingdom under the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Spreading the culture of voluntary work and humanitarian values, developing the youth in this field and enhancing competition. These are the goals of Sheikh Hassa bin Salman Al Khalifa Award. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamid Youssef. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirmed that the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to Bahrain Sports Day events reflects the keenness of the leadership to enhance such initiatives. His Highness affirmed that sports activities are not just physical activities, it's a lifestyle and it's considered a perfect way to build a strong society and a better future. His Highness said that the second edition of the event will hold several numbers of activities that will benefit all participants. He directed all public and private sector institutions to interact and participate in the event through organizing various activities in order to achieve the goals aspired by the wise leadership. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at Wadi Palace Jordan's ambassador to the Kingdom Rami Al Wurikat and expressed his happiness in Jordan's hosting of the 10th edition of Brave Championship that will be organized by KHK MMA organization on the 2nd of March. His Highness praised the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the youth and sports sector that contributed to the accomplishments achieved by the sector in various regional and international events that enhance the status of the kingdom. His Highness praised the relationship between Bahrain and Jordan and the progress witnessed in all fields. He added that Jordan's hosting of the championship comes along his vision to enhance this uh, sport globally in addition to convey the Bahraini successful experiences in the past edition, which affirms His Highness's efforts to support the youth and his contribution to the development of this sport on the international level. He praised the efforts of Jordan in facilitating the championship and expressed confidence that this edition will witness a huge success thanks to the care and support of Jordan's leadership. Jordan's ambassador to the kingdom referred Jordan's keenness to present the best image of the championship that matches the visions of His Highness Sheikh Khalid. He added that this Bahraini competition or championship was able to prove its success on the international level and attract the strongest fighters. He praised the efforts of His Highness the directives of the Bahraini leadership to improve the youth and sports sector that resulted in a number of achievements that enhanced the kingdom's status internationally. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at His Majesty Al Wadi Palace, Daily Tribune editor in chief Mahmoud Yusuf Al Mahmoud, as well as a number of members of the newspaper's board of directors. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed that the media plays a major role in highlighting the achievements of the kingdom in all sectors notably the sports sector, adding that optimally employing media as a main supportive method leads to achieving further successes. His Highness hailed the efforts of Daily Tribune by covering events in the kingdom and his participation in publishing news and reports that reflect Bahrain's cultural achievements and the development and growth achieved in various sectors during His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's era. He congratulated the newspaper on the leading steps it took in all fields. Sheikh Khalid discussed with the newspaper's editor-in-chief methods of supporting the efforts aimed at developing Bahraini sports, wishing the newspaper further success in serving the country. For his part, the Daily Tribune editor-in-chief expressed pride in meeting His Highness Sheikh Khalid and listening to his directives urging them to exert more efforts to serve the country. He affirmed that the newspaper will continue to promote the sports achievements in the kingdom to boost its status internationally.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the Foreign Ministers of the Member States Coalition for Supporting Legitimacy in Yemen that was held today in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh to announce the plan of comprehensive humanitarian operations in Yemen. The Foreign Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to Saudi Arabia for hosting the meeting and the role in leading the coalitions and supporting the legitimacy in Yemen under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. He praised the directives of the Saudi monarch to allocate $2 billion as a deposit to enhance the financial and economic condition of the country. He affirmed the keenness of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to continue providing aids to Yemen and the communication and coordination on the provisions of technical support through training programs in the areas of banking and medical assistance and treatment of Yemeni patients in the Kingdom of Bahrain. In addition to providing possible relief through the support of the Royal Charity Organization, noting the directives of His Majesty the King to allocate $2 million to build a health center in Yemen. The Foreign Minister praised the efforts of the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center in treating the injured and its role in cooperating with the Red Crescent Society and other humanitarian societies, as well as supporting government health facilities throughout Yemen and providing medical equipment and medicine. He has stressed the importance of the meeting in enhancing uh, collective efforts and providing humanitarian aid to the Yemeni people. The Foreign Minister affirmed uh, the firm stance of the Kingdom of Bahrain towards Yemen and supported all measures taken by the legitimacy in order to reach a comprehensive political solution based on Security Council Resolution 2216 and the Gulf Initiative and its executive mechanism at the outcomes of the National Dialogue to restore peace, security and stability to Yemen. The foreign ministers of Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, UAE and Egypt held a meeting today on the sidelines of the Coalition for Supporting Legitimacy in Yemen meeting. The meeting comes after the continuous dialogue among the quartet regarding Qatar crisis, where latest developments were presented. The quartet stressed the importance of continuing joint coordination in order to preserve Arab national security, safeguard regional and international peace and security, and strengthen efforts to eradicate terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and to confront all those who support it or finance it. The meeting also included discussions on topics of common concern. A tribute was paid to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for stressing the importance of consensus between the executive and legislative branches of the government. Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah hailed the royal directives given by His Majesty the King following His Majesty's reception of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King stressed that consensus on subsidy structuring should be given priority to ensure the government subsidies benefit the citizens who are affected by fee increase, affirming that there will be no fee hike until the Joint Executive Legislative Committee completes its work and until the National Audit Office makes sure that the process is in line with the laws and criteria in force in the Kingdom. Al Mullah stressed parliamentary resolve to support the vital interests of the nation and citizens despite daunting economic challenges facing Bahrain and other countries in the region. He paid tribute to His Royal Highness the Premier and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, hailing fruitful cooperation to achieve the aspirations of the nation and citizens. The Speaker emphasized that His Majesty the King's support to the legislative branch of the government represents a catalyst for achievements and development strides and initiatives to muster all resources to meet citizens' aspirations. The Shura Council expressed its deep appreciation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa regarding the importance of executive legislative consensus to achieve the kingdom's interests and the citizens' aspirations of more growth and prosperity. The Shura Council hailed His Majesty's directives to streamline subsidies to eligible citizens affected by fee hikes and that no fee increase may be decided until the Legislative Executive Branch's Joint Committee reaches its conclusions and after the National Audit Office verifies that this was in compliance with the laws and applicable criteria in Bahrain. The Council affirmed that these directives will boost the efforts exerted by the two branches to ensure the dignified livelihood of all citizens. The Council affirmed its full support to all the government's developmental programs and plans and support of the various community categories as well as the subsidies to, accommodate to, accommodities, uh, to commodities and services in the interest of citizens, emanating from uh, the synergy between the legislative 
legislature and the executive bodies to achieve sustainability and required quality of governmental services. The joint committee between the representatives and Shura councils, which is concerned with streamlining subsidies to eligible citizens affected by fee hikes, held its meeting today morning. The committee hailed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's keenness on supporting cooperation and consensus between the executive and legislative branches. It affirmed, or it affirmed that His Majesty's directives to intensify joint national action for the benefit of the kingdom as citizens serves as a roadmap for the next phase to ensure the development and prosperity of the nation. The committee reviewed a report prepared by the technical subcommittee chaired by the first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakhru, assigned to study the government's approach and consensus on the means for providing subsidies and other organizational procedures and mechanisms. The technical subcommittee outlined its task in six points. To outline mechanisms and measures to restructure government subsidies, to outline the eligibility criteria, controls and conditions for beneficiaries of government subsidies, to enumerate all types of subsidies provided to citizens as well as legislation and executive ministerial decisions, statistics, data and figures related to the subject of support, to enumerate all recommendations agreed upon by the members, to determine the criteria and controls for maintaining the Bahraini individual's income level, and to set a mechanism to verify the subsidies' actual reaches in its beneficiaries. The committee also assigned the chairman of the Finance and Economic Affairs Committee at the Representatives Council, Abdurrahman Muali, to present a visual presentation on the figures and data on the subject of subsidies and to prepare an integrated report containing statistics on the subject of government support and disbursement to eligible citizens. The joint committee also decided to instruct the technical subcommittee to meet next week to put these visions in the form of proposals. Under the implementation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, during the government form 2017 held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa at the initiative of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to hold workshops to determine mechanisms and identify the priorities of the Government Action Plan 2019-2022. The coordination meeting on government performance was held today in the presence of relevant undersecretaries, assistant undersecretaries and directors. The meeting comes alongside the meeting of legislative themes on the government action plan to be held tomorrow in preparation for the workshop on the legislative and government performance themes to be held on January 28th, chaired by Deputy Premier and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs, Jawad Salam Larayid. The workshop will be the second in a series of workshops devoted to developing government action plan mechanisms and priorities. The meeting began with a speech by the Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Coordinator of the Government Performance Aspects, Mohammed Ali Al-Qaid, in which he said that the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa for the Bahraini citizens to be the main focus of the development process has been implemented through government initiatives within the government's work plan to lead by His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. He added that conveying coordination meetings embodies the affirmation by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the importance of enhancing coordination and joint action between government bodies. He added that after receiving recommendations from government bodies, they were sorted according to priority and public policies, and then categorized the final initiatives according to the sector and its policies. He expressed aspirations that these initiatives are an example for government bodies in improving the efficiency of production and quality of performance for the interests of the people, which is the basis of the current and future governmental work programs and in line with the Economic Vision 2030. The outcome of the discussion will be submitted to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs, which in turn will consider approved and submit it to the workshop on the legislative government performance themes to be held next week.